Hello and welcome to Inside EcoDevo, an economic development podcast helping Missourians prosper. On this episode, we're talking about the Small Business Grant Program, which is funded through the American Rescue Plan Act, better known as ARPA. And sitting down with us to help with the discussion is Taylor Mazdra, Senior Project Manager on the Federal Initiatives Team here within the Missouri Department of Economic Development. Taylor, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, So before we dive into the the topic at hand, and I'd imagine this topic is going to be pretty popular (laughs) based on past experiences. If you could just give us a little bit of a background on you, how did you come to be a team member here within DED? Yeah, absolutely. So I joined the team here at DED about six months ago, actually. um, And I'm, I guess, one of the senior members (laughs) on the team since it's a new division and we're growing so quickly. Um, So that's kind of hard to believe. But previously, I worked down in Cape Girardeau at the Cape Girardeau Area Chamber of Commerce. My primary role was in marketing and communications, but anybody who's familiar with the chamber industry knows everybody does a little bit of everything there. So I definitely um, got to dip my toes in the water for the first time with economic development, learned really to respect and appreciate the role that it plays in our communities across the state and across the country. But I also spent a lot of time working with small businesses too, which has been really helpful in helping um, develop the small business grant. Yeah, was there anything that, you know, kind of drew you to that line of work, working with small businesses and, and that nature, and then, you know, making the transition to the department? Mm-hmm. I've always kind of had a heart for community in general. And I think that small businesses are the heart of our communities, the backbone of our communities across the state. Um, They are so supportive of a lot of things. And um, I just really grew to love, you know, that that aspect of economic development and and community development. So when I heard about the opportunity with ARPA and the Department of Economic Development, um, we obviously stayed very plugged in with DED working at the chamber. Um, so when I was following these ARPA funds, I'm like, I just can't can't miss out on this opportunity to help make such a monumental generational difference for folks across the state. It seems like a good transition, a smart transition there. I do also want to ask you about the federal initiatives team. Previous episodes, we talked to Shad Burner, who leads that team. It's a brand new team within the department. I mean, I just want to say from your perspective, being a new team member on a brand new team, and I think Shad had said it was kind of like a startup. You know, you're kind of working (laughs) it as it it goes. From your perspective, how's it going? Do you see that that being a positive thing, kind of hitting the ground running as a new uh, team member within this new team doing, you know, all the stuff that you guys are (laughs) tackling right now? Just a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a really, really great experience so far. Um, We are really fortunate. I've heard the term before, you know, you have to have the right people in the right seats on the bus, you know, and I think we really have built out that team really well. Everybody's in the right seats. Everybody has, you know, a variety of experience and it's plugging in perfectly for what we're needed to um, develop these programs. Shad has been a great leader in the process and with the support of Director Coast and honestly, the whole department because it's it's been a team effort getting all this up off the ground. So it's been an excellent experience and um Really, really fun to be a part of. Yeah, so let's dive into it. You are the lead, or you know, the the senior program manager under you know the small business grant program. And as I kind of said before, I, I'd imagine this one's going to be highly sought after for small businesses. So tell us about it. What is the small business grant program? What's going on there? Sure. So you know, starting out at a fifty thousand foot view and kind of zooming it in there. The funds for this program come from the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA. Um, The state of Missouri got, I think it's like $2.6 billion, and then DED received around $600 million of that. And that's billion with a B. Billion with a B, yeah, a lot of money. I say that so casually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so DED got about $600 million to deploy. Um, We have 10 different programs, roughly, might be nine, but several different programs that we are developing to help deploy all of these funds. Um, So the Small Business Grant is one of those programs. And ultimately, it was designed um, because, as we know, our small businesses were hit really hard during the pandemic. And this is here to provide some relief for that negative economic impact that they experienced due to the pandemic. And um, when we talk about these programs and specifically the small business program, what is the intended purpose for the program? What's the kind of thought process that goes behind it when a program like this gets developed? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it all goes back to, again, recognizing that negative economic impact 
that our small businesses experience. You know, that's something that comes straight from the federal guidance and really is just so applicable here of what they experienced. It was hard. You know, there were counties that shut down for business. There were, um, you know, like lost revenue, increased costs as a result of the pandemic. So we recognize that and want to provide some relief to help businesses move forward past this pandemic. And uh, we were talking numbers for a little bit there. You were throwing out uh, some funds. So you might have already said this and I just didn't catch it. How much of the funding is allocated specifically to the small business grant? Yes, there's $10 million allocated for this program. So a lot of money to go around. Um, I guess there, you could say there's never enough. <laughs> I wish we could have all the money for our small businesses, but of course we can't do that. But $10 million for this program, $2 million of that is reserved for our minority and women-owned businesses. And that's just a cap. It's not... Or, let me rephrase that. It is not a cap. Um, it is a reservation for our minority and women-owned businesses. So um, if if those $2 million um, get used up really quickly, then we'll just dip into the other $8 million that we have there and um, it'll, it'll go out. Okay. And when those funds are kind of, you know, being decided where, how much goes, the allocation and all that, how is that decided? How do we know that $10 million is a good number to fit the bill, so mm -hmm. to speak, for this program. Absolutely. So the dollar amounts for each of the programs was um, determined by the legislature. So for this program, we ended up with $10 million. When it comes to determining the exact award amounts that are being distributed, the award maximum for this program is $25,000. The minimum is 2500 so somewhere in the middle is where the sweet spot of where awards are going to happen. And that is all dependent on the level of loss that our businesses are able to demonstrate. So in the application, we will be um, requesting um, as a required document for our applicants to submit their tax filings from 2019 and 2021. So the 2019 numbers really establish a baseline how they were operating pre-pandemic levels. And then 2021, those numbers for gross revenue and receipts will demonstrate the loss that they experienced from the pandemic. So we're subtracting that 2021 from 2019, and then that number there that we get um, is the award amount up to $25,000. So if a business um, is able to demonstrate $50,000 worth of loss, they'll be eligible for the full 25. But if they are only able to demonstrate $10,000 of loss, then that would be their award amount, $10,000. Okay. So, I mean, you kind of explained how we come up with the number, but from a business perspective, let's just say I'm a small business. I a lumber small business or, or what what have you mm -hmm. and I'm going to apply for this what does the process look like for me I know you guys are still kind of working some things out things are you know the guidelines have come out I believe you know th the ball's still rolling a little bit uh, but what's that process going to look like for a small business from point of application to the point of end mm -hmm. good question so final guidelines are published the, um, or were published the first week of November here. So um, from there, we are asking all of our applicants to really dig through those final guidelines and familiarize yourself with everything in there. That's going to tell you if you're eligible for the grant, what required documentation you need to submit your application, and all the good information that you need pertaining to this grant will be in those final guidelines. From there, once you're familiarized with it, you definitely want to start gathering all that required documentation because I don't think I've mentioned quite yet, which is this is, this is a very important point. It is a first come first served grant. So time is of the essence. You definitely want to be prepared when that application opens up because you need to get your spot in line. There's only so many funds available and there's lots of folks who are in need. So want to have your, your ducks in a row, so to say. During those two weeks there, the final guidelines are published the first week of November, and then the week of November 14th, the application will open. So the specific date and time is going to be listed in those final guidelines there. But so during those two weeks, that's that's your job is to get all the required documentation together. Then that application opens, and our applicants will submit their applications from there, then the ball is in our court again at DED for us to review all the applications that we receive. We will review them in order that we receive them and then make awards in order of eligibility and acceptance. So once you receive notification of 
being awarded the grant, woohoo, then really the only thing left besides getting your funds is you'll have to maintain the records of all of this for five years. And then if there's anything else in, you know, the beneficiary agreement there, which is all outlined in the final guidelines, you'll have to maintain that. But it is a grant, so there's no paying it back or anything like that. You get your money and you're, you're pretty much good to go there. I will say, though, I've had a few questions from folks who are um, wondering if there's any sort of concern with their application. Is there going to be a chance to correct it or if they, you know, submit the wrong page of their tax filing or whatever? We're humans. There's room for human error in this process. Um, You just have to kind of follow the guidelines that we have set out for that. So the application is um, going to be housed in Submittable, which is an online platform. It's very easy. Log in online, create an account and submit your application there. Um, If there's any issue with it when we're reviewing it, we will reach out to our applicants through Submittable, and then it will send them an email as well. So keep an eye on your email during that time, and you'll have a few days to resolve that issue and keep your spot in line. And if we don't hear back from you, unfortunately, you'll, you'll lose your spot in line there. But it's, it's a pretty smooth process. We've tried to make it easy. I know it sounds like a lot. I guess it is. It's a lot when you're not familiar with grant development and all of that and applying for grants. But like I, I have experience with small businesses in the past, so I, I know all the great things that our small businesses are capable of. And I certainly know that this is one thing that they won't, won't struggle with. And I have been a huge advocate for making the process as easy as possible for them. Well, I know that will be uh, music to a lot of small businesses <laughs> ear. Um, before I get into the next question that that's leading me to, uh, since we covered quite a lot there about, you know, the guidelines and Smittable and getting, you know, this information and that information, where can people go to find, you know, the guidelines and all the kind of information that's going to you know, guide them mm-hmm. to doing this properly? Where can they go to find that? Excellent question. So for the small business grant and really any of our DED ARPA programs, all the information is housed on our website, ded.mo.gov slash ARPA, A-R-P-A. So all the information will be housed on there. Ultimately, you can access those final guidelines there and then access the application and so on and so forth. Okay. I kind of want to take a little bit of a step back to some of the things that you were saying a little Mm -hmm. bit earlier from like the federal and the state side and and all that. Obviously, there's a partnership that has to happen there between the, the feds and the state to kind of come up with this plan, how it's going to be dispersed. And we have to work with them in some respect to you know, to make sure that we're doing what we need to do correctly to get it to the people Mm -hmm. who need the funds. Can you talk a little bit about that process and that partnership with the feds and how it plays into what we get here in the state and how we disperse it, how we do our job, basically? Yes. So the the funding, this is federal funding, as you mentioned. So that came down to us at the state level. The federal government has their set of rules and regulations of how this funding is to be used. And then from there, we as the state, as we're developing our programs, have to adhere to that. So it's kind of like a funnel. It starts out somewhat broad (laughs) and then it comes down to the state um, and we narrow it down a little bit more to what is going to work for our state and our communities. And then it's passed on for this grant directly to the beneficiaries, which are the small businesses. And then some of like the the numbers that have been thrown out and then obviously the process that these small businesses are going to go through, it kind of harkens back to the the CARES Act grants that were happening. Mm -hmm. And I know that was before your time with when you were with the department, but since you've been working with small businesses, I'm sure you probably have some kind of knowledge there. How does this current iteration of the small business grant, how does it compare to the CARES Act small business grant that happened? Is it similar? Is it kind of like CARES Act 2.0? Like, is there anything that was gleaned from that that's been carried over? There were a lot of lessons learned with the CARES Act from my understanding. Like you said, I wasn't here for that, but a couple of the folks who are on our team were here for that. So it's great to have that institutional knowledge of how all of that operated. They have that inside perspective and I kind of had the outside perspective. So it it makes a good team there to help build this program out. I think everyone did the best they could with the information they had with CARES Act. So it was a great program, but also there was a lot of room for improvement too. If you recall with CARES Act, um, we were having applicants like submit individual receipts. And I know I've heard- I was, I was in the trenches yes. a little bit. So I, I'm aware, I mean, I didn't get the full brunt of 
some of the headaches, but I am aware. So it's, it's yeah. why I was kind of wanting to pick your brain on yeah. it. Yeah. Shad was telling me a story one time of how he like found himself like out on a farm, like taking photos of a receipt and sending them in for a farmer. So that shows the links that DED will go to for its customers. <laughs> but um, that was cumbersome for us at DED and also our applicants, which we just don't want a cumbersome experience for them. So we've really streamlined things and taken all the lessons that we learned with CARES Act to improve this program. There's a lot of similarities. Um, You can look at the guidelines for the ARPA small business grant compared to the CARES. Um, There's a lot of similarities there, but I like to call it like new and improved. (laughs) I know we kind of talked about the intended purpose for the program. Like, what are we hoping happens when this, when the funds go out the door and obviously not everyone's going to get funds. There's only limited numbers and we got a lot of small businesses. I think what's the the number 90 something percent of businesses in Missouri are small businesses. Mm -hmm. So I'd imagine quite a lot of them are going to want to, you know, take advantage of these funds. Uh, But once the funds go out the door and they're in the hands of the businesses, what are we hoping will be the outcome of this? This sounds kind of corny, and this is just from my personal perspective, but I hope that the folks who receive these awards can take a deep breath and feel like the worst is past them. You know, it's been a, a really hard couple of years and, you know, this is this is here to provide some relief. So ultimately, that is the goal is to provide relief, but also position our small businesses for success in the future. You know, we when all of these ARPA funds came initially, DED as a department really took a step back and tried to be very strategic and intentional with how we use these funds. And I think the small business grant is no different. Um, we really want to award these to folks who are deserving and in need, and will continue to make a positive impact on our Missouri economy. Yeah, for sure. And this next question, I feel like we've kind of touched upon it. It's very similar to what I've kind of just asked, but how important are these kinds of programs for businesses or just citizens in general? When these programs become available and funds go out the door, we're helping them and whatever way, shape, or form, how important is it for that business, that community, that individual? Mm -hmm. The thing with the COVID-19 pandemic was it was something that took the control out of of people's hands. Business owners, we can do, I'm not a business owner, I don't know why I say we, (laughs) but business owners can do everything in their power to create an environment for success but that was something completely out of their control that affected their environment there. I feel like these funds bring some control back to our businesses and give them that relief that they need to get back on the right foot again and just move forward. That's a very good way to, to put that. You're, we're giving them control back to them. I guess I, I had not had that perspective, but you saying that makes total sense. <laughs> so kind of looking at, at the future, what do we see the future of business recovery from the pandemic and maybe little offshoots of what the pandemic has started. You know, first we had the CARES Act, which we talked about. Now we have ARPA, which kind of feels like CARES Act 2.0, but you like improved CARES (laughs) CARES Act. Could there be a third phase of recovery? And if so, what does that look like? Well, for CARES Act and ARPA, obviously both of those were um, directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic, federal funding for that. We never, we never know what's going to be thrown our way for opportunities. So I don't know currently at this time what's coming next. But of course, we in, on the federal initiatives team and the department as a whole are always keeping an eye out for other opportunities and um, we'll take advantage as they're available and applicable. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the nature of, of the beast. We're kind of, you know, running in tandem with, mm-hmm. with things as they happen. It's kind of like cause, effect, react to what what's happening. So it's an ever going struggle and, yeah. <laughs> and fight, so to speak. Is there anything else uh, regarding the small business grant program? I, f- I kind of feel like we ran through a lot of things fairly quickly. I know it's not the largest program uh, funding wise that we have under ARPA, but it, it, I don't know. I think I'm just looking back to the CARES Act part and how And how important it felt to small businesses and how many businesses were trying to take advantage of that. And I just feel like this is a large program, though it does not have the largest amount of funds allocated to it. So is there anything else regarding the small business grant program that would be very helpful for people to know that we haven't (laughs) covered yet? Yeah, um, 
a couple things come to mind just right off the bat. I'm thinking of our eligibility requirements because that's obviously what I get a lot of questions on um, is, am I even eligible for this grant? Should I spend the time getting the documentation together and all of that? There, there are some standard eligibility requirements pretty much across all of our ARPA programs, obviously, because they all come from the same federal funding. But a few of the specific ones for the small business grant as it relates to employee count, um, we are defining small businesses as um, a business for profit in the state of Missouri that has 50 employees or fewer at the time of application. So at the time of application is kind of the key point there. And full-time employee is defined as someone who works 35 or more hours per week. So 50 folks in that position. Um, It doesn't matter how many part-time employees you have or contract workers or anything like that. It is based off of your full-time employees there. We'll ask for documentation on that too. One other thing I was going to mention is um, chains and franchises. That's something that um, we got a lot of feedback on during our public comment period, which is something we're doing for all of our ARPA programs. In the final guidelines, chains or franchises with five or more locations are ineligible for this grant too. So that's something worth noting. I've gotten a few questions on that. And also um, if a business has undergone a change of ownership between 2019 and 2021, that's okay. As long as you have the proper tax filings and documentation that you need, it's not a problem. So those are like the most common questions I get in relation to eligibility. So I feel it's worth mentioning here today. Okay. So we've covered the amount of funds, how you're going to get the funds, where you can find to get the information uh, to get the funds, eligibility, anything else. Because I know like there's a lot of little details that go in behind the scenes that you know the people applying aren't going to necessarily may or may not need to know, but it could be useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anything else that, that we could cover that's going to make this process easier for yeah. our small businesses? I think we covered the high points of okay. it. Of course, as always, I'll be a broken record and always refer folks back to those final guidelines for clear direction on anything related okay. to the grant. And then uh, we plug the site where they can go, ded.mo.gov slash ARPA, but is there like a direct contact phone number and email, what have you to call if they run into problems or questions? That is yours truly. So again, my name is Taylor Majdra and my email is taylor.majdra and that's M-A-Z as in zebra, D as in David, R-A at ded.mo.gov. Email is usually the best way to reach out because I can pull up some references to help answer your question best. But of course, you can always give me a call to my number is 573-508-2411. If your email is not already overflowing and your <laughs> phone not ringing off the hook, it will be after this episode I know. goes live. Okay. Uh, so to wrap it all up here, the department's motto is helping Missourians prosper. So how does a program like the Small Business Grant Program and the work that goes into it, how does it help fulfill that mission? I think everything related to this grant really lives out our mission there of helping Missourians prosper. We went through a time where prosper might not have been the word that everyone was using to describe their day-to-day life, but hopefully by deploying these funds, it will again provide some relief there and get people back to prospering again, so helping Missourians prosper. I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up. Uh, I'll open up one last time. I don't think you'll have anything, but if you do, uh, now's the time. Floor is yours. I don't think I have anything additional to add. Just always, I mean, if my phone's ringing off the hook, that's what I'm here for. You know, that's my job here. So I'm always happy to answer any questions and help folks out. I can't fill out your application for you, but I can definitely help uh, guide you with some required documentation and eligibility and all that good stuff. So I'm happy to do that. Perfect. Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk about all this information. I know it's a very, very busy time right now. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this Inside Eco Devo episode featuring the Small Business Grant Program. To find out more about what's happening at the Missouri Department of Economic Development, including current programs and upcoming opportunities, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And if there's an economic development topic you're interested in hearing more about, or if you have questions or comments, we can email us directly at ded.communications at ded.mo.gov. And you can also leave those comments right here on this episode on SoundCloud.